Well, thank, thank you so much. Uh, that was uh, a lot of flashbacks there for me. I have, a, I have an association with the University of Texas that goes back a very, very long time. I grew up in a small town many of you may have heard of or not. It's called Alice, Texas. My father was a country doctor there and interested me in biology. And the schools there were pretty good, but you know, could have been better. And I was lucky to have had some teachers who got me involved with the University of Texas via the programs at the old University High School, which I think was somewhere right around here, so no longer here, but at the, at the summer after my eighth grade in, um, in uh, school. And I went to summer programs eighth, ninth, and 10th at the University of High School. And then when I was in the 11th grade, I had the, the uh, good luck to participate in a National Science Foundation biology program that was run by Dr. Irwin Spear, the late Irwin Spear, which really got me hooked on biology and uh, had lab experience. And then and, uh, and I came here for my undergraduate training starting in 1965 and met Barry Kiddo, who was the fellow that talked um, about my uh, training, uh, and started working in his lab as an undergraduate and then just continued just with a love of science and uh, learned, learned a few things. One of them, my father was a doctor and, and really you know, kind of wanted me to go to medical school and I assumed that I would, but once I started working in the lab, I realized there was a big difference between medicine and science. In medicine, you have to be right all the time. You have to know algorithms, you have to recognize symptoms, you have to apply the right measures to, to help the patient and make sure you don't hurt them and hopefully that you help them. And so it's very, very disciplined and, and rigorous and I'm not that kind of guy. A, sci <laughs> a, a, scientist, a scientist should be wrong most of the time, actually. I mean, we, that's what we do. We make mistakes, we ask questions, and most of the time we're wrong. All we'd have to do is be right occasionally, you know, and so that, that had a lot of appeal to me. <laughs> but anyway, while I was at, 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 uh, my, at, at my undergraduate years here, there were two things that really stood out. One was, was Barry Kiddo trained me in biochemistry and, and really, again, helped my love of science. But he taught me something that went way beyond what you learn in the classroom, and that is that you really have an obligation, you know, if you're a scientist and having the you know, it's a hard, hard way to live, but also it's very rewarding. And he taught me that you, you need to pay back society. You should do something good that helps people. You know, you don't have to necessarily work on a project that, that directly helps people, but you should sit back every now and then and try to understand how you might apply your science to doing something good. And so that was what the thing that I did that everybody was talking about is I tried to understand how T cells work. I wasn't looking for a drug for cancer, but figured out a couple of important things about how T cells work, and then, then figured out a way to use it to treat cancer. Anyway, all, all of this came from my training here. My interest in immunology was really inspired by the late Bill Mandy, who was a professor of microbiology that taught the undergraduate immunology course. Anyway, I stayed on in, in uh, Dr. Kiddo's lab and got my PhD here, and then uh, after a brief uh, uh, trip to Scripps Clinic in California for postdoc, I came back to Austin. Uh, with a job from the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I lived in Austin, but worked in, in, in Smithville with the lab out there that many of you may be aware of. And those are some of the best years. Uh, I can remember you might have seen a fellow that many of you probably recognize from those photos. Willie Nelson came to Austin when I lived here. There was Stevie Ray Vaughan, and the music scene was just beginning to, to, uh, to break out. But anyway, after I was here from 64 to 80, let's see, 64 to 84, actually on and off, except, except for those three years. Went to Berkeley for 20 years, to New York for 20 years. About three years ago, I came back to MD Anderson uh, to continue my work and try to you know, improve the, this cancer therapy we've been working on. I've still got lots of good friends from my 20 years in Austin, many of whom may be, several of whom may be here tonight. Um, but in any event, I, uh, Austin really and UT really hold a special place in my heart. Um, it really helped make me who I am, gave me the basis for the, all the work that I've done. Even when I was in California, New York, I tried to come back at least every couple of years and give lectures to the students here. I've got lots of friends on the faculty here. And uh, this is where my, my heart really is. And I still think of MD Anderson as a part of the system, certainly, and it's very closely related to UT. And I'm really in, enjoying uh, being back and continuing to serve the university that you know trained me since I was in the eighth grade. Uh, through my PhD and con continues to help me in 
uh, as I continue to work uh, with uh, my, my partner in, in life and uh, inspiration, uh, Pam Sharma, uh, who run a major uh, immunotherapy operation at MD Anderson. We're trying to extend these new therapies to as many different kinds of cancer as we can. Anyway, so thank you very much for the, this honor.